Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. SEC non-conference game. All right, I laid out on the website a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, what I think is the 10 best games. Now, I've got some honorable mentions in there, so we'll jump in on those. Uh, you know how it is. The adage forever has been that the league schedule is, is too difficult, and they're not trying to schedule tough out-of-conference games. There are a few here and there, LSU, Alabama, you know, that always schedule tough games at a conference. But a lot of other teams never play anybody tough at a conference. That is changing. There is a rule in the SEC now that you have to play at least one Power 5 non-conference team in your out-of-conference. Like, it's to keep up with the Joneses, right? Yep. And, and I think that other teams have done this, too. So we are both Bama and LSU fans, so we talk about them. But South Carolina's been playing Clemson forever. Florida And, uh, and those are playing, annual rivalries. Yes, has been Flor- playing Florida State. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Georgia, Georgia Tech. So you've got some interstate rivals that are non-conference that have been played forever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But that's about it. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for those interstate rivals and then a few teams going and picking – some big boys to play, we didn't have much. There was not much. Florida didn't leave the state of Florida for a non-conference game for, God, years. Now, they they always play Florida State at the end of the year. So that's always been a, a pretty difficult one. But, you know, I, this year, of course, they're playing Michigan. And that is just a monster first-week matchup. Monster first-week matchup. So let's go on and start this thing off. And we're going to do this by date. All right? Okay. So. These are the 10 that, that I thought were the best, right? So first off, you've got South Carolina and NC State in Charlotte. And Muschamp over, overdid it last year. Like, he, he exceeded expectations. Nobody expected him to make a bowl game, you know, none of that. And they, they played well in the bowl game. They played a 10-2 and two South Florida team and got beat in overtime. But South Florida was awesome last year. <laughs> they were great. Uh, but they've got, you know, they, this is two mediocre teams, I think, uh, that look like they are incredibly evenly matched. Like, I think that they've got their quarterback of the future at South Carolina, Jake Bentley. NC State beat Vanderbilt, you know, in the Independence Bowl last year. And, and we're, I mean, this close to beating Clemson. You know, one missed field goal, well, several missed field goals, but one at the very end of the game straight on line from 30 yards or whatever the hell it was. I, I mean, tell me what you think. Is is this worthy of, of being up here? I like it. I also like South Carolina a lot this year. I, I think Muschamp found his quarterback. And I think oh, yeah. this is the best quarterback Muschamp's ever had being a head coach from oh, his time in Florida and his first year at South Carolina. Bentley's a game changer. Yeah, he, I agree. He just is, and we've found that this is a quarterback league. Yes. Just like every other football league, it's all about the quarterback. If you don't have one, you can't play. If you do, you can win the well, conference. That's right. And you are worlds better than everybody else. Man, I think he's got a chance to be the second best quarterback in that conference. Who gracious. Other than Eaton, name somebody in the East that scares you as a starting quarterback. In the East? Well, in the East. Oh, okay, in that division. Not the okay, in that division. In that division. Um, I'm going to give you Eaton at Georgia. I got, I got nobody. You got nobody, I got right? who's who's the kid at Kentucky? Uh, I don't know, but he he had a good year last year. He had year. a pretty good year. Yeah, so okay, but I don't think he's as good as what was it? It was Stephen what? Stephen something. Anyway, we'll we'll get into him here in a little while. But yeah, um, I think he's the best. I think he's the second best quarterback in in the East. Yeah, and I think Muschamp is a better coach than Smart. Yeah, he's had a little more experience. I guess. That's, that's, it's his second time around. Yeah, in essence, they're the same kind of coach. Yeah, I mean, I mean, both of them worked under Saban forever. I mean, but Muschamp's got five years of experience on him. Yes, you know, as a head coach, and and then he's got a lot more defensive coordinator coaching under different coaches. That's true. not just working under Saban. That is true. That is true. So uh, I'm excited about this game. And I you're agree. right. North Carolina State was a up and comer last year. Nobody saw coming. Right. I think they were really good. That's. I, I think their coach uh, Dave Doran is. I think he's really good. Remember, he came from Northern Illinois. Guy knows what he's doing. Guy knows what he's doing. All right next up, we got Florida and Michigan. That one speaks for itself. I, I, I think this is the biggest one of the weekend, of of all of these, of uh, over Alabama, Florida State. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of 
Alabama fatigue, but also if Alabama rolls on them, then it doesn't well, yeah, then it doesn't matter. When, when, at the end of the day, I think this is going to be the best game of the of all of these after they're all played. Okay, okay, because I think there's potential for Alabama to steamroll Florida State. I I could wait. All right, so that's that's the next one that that's we've got. Alabama, one. Florida State. That one could be, you know, a monster game. Now I'm, monster. I'm hoping not. I would love to see Florida State win that game. Obviously, and and I. I think Saban has never lost to a former assistant. No. So, and I mean, these are two of maybe four or five of the most talented teams in the country. And like, two of maybe the best four or five head coaches in the country. Yeah. Like, there's only, what, four head coaches that have – is it four active coaches now or is it three? Are there only three active coaches that have national championships now? Ooh. You got Jimbo Fisher, Dabo Sweeney, Saban. No, Urban Meyer's got one. Urban Meyer. So that's, okay, so two of the four. There were five when Stoops was still around. That's and right. he's already retired. Stoops so, retired. So it went from five to four, not four to three. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be big. Uh, the next one up, we've got Sunday, September 3rd, Texas A&M at UCLA. Both of these dudes are going to be coaching for their job, I think. They both open up on the hot seat, and the difference this year compared to last year UCLA is not playing in the Texas Heat, and Texas A&M this year does not have a quarterback. You know, I but there's no telling what could end up happening because if A&M finds a defense, if Josh Rosen is rusty, you know, there's there's no telling what's going on. It should be pretty big. It is the first Sunday night college football game on Fox, so it should be big. Last year. The only Sunday game was Notre Dame and Texas, and it did monster yeah, numbers. Big, big number. Monster numbers. Uh, this probably won't be as big of a number as that, but it could be a, a better game. Well, because that. it's going head to head with, I think, Virginia Tech and West Virginia, I think, and that's going to be on ABC, mm-hmm. and they're both at the exact same time. So it won't be the same number. You know, these yeah. two, if Fox and ESPN or ABC, whatever you want to call are are competing with each other. So. You know we gotta we gotta figure out what's going on there, but uh, but I think it will be a pretty big ball game. So opening up in the Rose Bowl on Sunday night, I'm I'm in. Uh, Monday night, September fourth, Tennessee and Georgia Tech in Atlanta. In Atlanta, it's supposed to be a neutral site game, but <laughs> it it's where Georgia I, Tech plays football. But I think that, well, it's a different stadium. It's going to oh, be in Mercedes oh, Benz. I'm sorry, but, I'm sorry. It's a different state. It's the same town. It's the same city. If you think that there will not be more orange in that stadium than gold and white. You're probably right, but Tennessee is a way bigger football school. That's what I'm saying. So it it it's neutral as far as like the home field advantage. Okay, I'll give so that, that that makes sense. Um, I mean, Butch Jones like coaching for his job. Also, it, his entire season, his his job could be predicated on whether or not he wins this ball game. The one good thing is they open the season up here. Okay, and. You know when you've watched Georgia Tech over the years, you either want to play them early or you want to play them after a bye week. You need a – or in a bowl game. Yeah. Because you need a couple of weeks to prepare for the option. Yeah. But if you've got a couple of weeks to prepare for it, man, a, a lot of teams beat them. Yeah. I agree. I agree. All right, next up we got Saturday, September 9th. we got a couple of big ones that weekend. Georgia at Notre Dame. Now, it's not like these two are going to be national championship type teams, but just seeing Huge those programs. helmets yeah. against each other is going to be big. Huge programs. Um, Kirby Smarts, you know, they're, the Bulldogs open against uh, a good Appalachian State team that's going to surprise a lot of people again this year like they have the last few years. Uh, and then they travel to South Bend to play Notre Dame. Notre Dame went 4-8 and eight last year, and this is another thing where a guy is coaching for his job. Brian Kelly has to win this year. He replaced his entire coaching staff last year. I don't know how he saved his job last year. I don't. I, get that. I got no idea. I, no I idea. I think he should have been fired last year. I think his buyout is massive. Man, I don't. But that's your fault, dude. It, it shouldn't matter because Notre Dame just has prints the dough. money. They print money. Uh, September 9th, that evening, Auburn plays at Clemson, and they played ridiculously close unexpectedly last year in the first game of the year. Um, you know, Auburn had a Hail Mary that could have won the ball game at the end of the – I mean, who would have seen that coming against the team that eventually won the national championship? I'm really curious to see Clemson this year. I actually 
we'll get into this a little bit in the next show. I think Clemson's going to struggle. It. I think Clemson was almost like Auburn with Cam Newton. I think Watson was a really good I quarterback. Think, I think he and I was. And I think he hit a, a lot of flaws. Yeah. I mean, a lot. Yeah. So, but I'm not I'm not saying Auburn's going to go into Clemson and beat them. Death Valley number two is going to be nuts that night. Uh, and yeah. This year, I think that, and just, that's why I said call, number just, two. Just call them Clemson. <laughs> they are a number two. Uh, I think that Auburn may have the better quarterback this year, which is a little bit surprising. Saturday, September 16th, we got Ole Miss at California. Now, this is – an interesting game to me. Yeah, it's just interesting because, like, Cal isn't exactly – they're trying to change over their philosophy on football, right? So they're, they hired Justin Wilcox to come in and replace Sonny Dykes, who was run and gun, you know, throw the football all over the field, whatever, right? And now Justin Wilcox, former Wisconsin defensive coordinator, like – He's got to change the mindset of that football team. And we've already talked about how you can't change a team from finesse to, to, power. to power. Quickly. You and can. You can eventually. You need three to four years. Yeah, look at what Bielema had to do Legit. after replacing, uh, well, John L. Smith, but Petrino. Yeah. Um, it takes a little bit of time to switch, you know, switch that thing over. Massive and, overhaul in talent. And Ole Miss can, can springboard off of a road victory like this. Because they open up with, I mean, two nobodies. They open up with South Alabama and UT Martin. Mm-hmm. You know, who cares? No. And they get to go to North Cal. It's going to be beautiful. Weather's going to be great. It's yeah. not Southern Cal, so it's not going to be super hot. Um, it, I, I think it's going to be really, really nice for Ole Miss to get started after all the offseason turmoil that they've had and they're going to continue to have and the questions around that program. It'll be nice to get away from the South for a little bit yeah. and, and possibly out, win a football game. Get out to California, and if they can start the season off 3-0, and man, just call it a win. Yeah, I agree. The last three that I've got are all rivalry games. If I had marked this as, as no rivalries, then That'd you know it. It, that would have been it. Um, Florida, Florida State, obviously every year. Uh, if Florida gets better quarterback play, I think they can compete with Florida State. I think they've both got loads of talent. They've both got a ton of experience coming back. And you never know what's going to happen here. You know, I, if I'm not mistaken, this game is, I want to say it's in Gainesville. It, it is. is in Gainesville. No, they only, so, they only have two real road games, and one of them is a neutral yeah, site game. Exactly. Exactly. And they, they don't they leave play Florida two, very much. They play two games outside of Florida. One of them's a neutral side. If Malik Zaire steps up, and I, I trust me, I don't have a whole lot of faith in him anyway, but th- there's always NFL talent all over the field here. If Florida gets good quarterback play, they could be dangerous in this game. Uh, South Carolina and Clemson is also that day. Again, South Carolina may have – we don't know what Clemson's quarterback situation is going to be. South Carolina might have the better quarterback. And South Carolina played at Clemson last year. Gave them all they wanted. Nope, it wasn't that last year. It was not that last year because last year oh, that's what they it was smoked. fifty-six it to was seven. Two years, two years ago, ago in Columbia when they were three and eight or right. whatever. Columbia, uh, they almost kept them out of the playoffs. Yeah, that would have that would have cost them a shot at playing for the national championship. And if you think that Muschamp and that bunch isn't raring to get back at these dudes for hanging fifty-six on them last year, like you're out of your mind. So this is one thing that I love about some of these rivalry games. Is is I'm I'm close to some people that are huge South Carolina fans. We are West biased in the SEC because that's where we live, that's where we grew up. But this South Carolina Clemson rivalry is much bigger than advertised. Oh, yeah. It yeah. really is. Those two schools hate each other. The reason it's not bigger is because neither one of them have been on a national stage for an extended period of time, and and both of them at the same time very often. Oh yeah, like rare, it doesn't happen rarely. very often. But this is, I mean, it is Alabama-Auburn. It is Ole Miss-Mississippi State. It is, yeah. I mean, you name it. LSU-Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Like, it is hatred. Yeah, they, they hatred. really don't like each other. My South Carolina buddy g- gives you hell. Oh, gives yeah. Gives you hell because you were, as soon as the, the national championship game was over with, oh, all right, we lost. No big deal. And he's like, no, I can't believe they finally got <laughs> Like, I cannot deal with Clemson yeah. fans. Now now I have to deal with this, and you're not even upset about it at all because you got, like, 25 of these things. Uh, well, I mean, how am I supposed to get mad? You know? I, just, <laughs> like, I mean, I could, but, get like, mad. I just – Just get mad. You know, we got beat by a better quarterback. What am I supposed to do yeah. here? Anyway, 
But, so, so that's that's going to be a good game. And the last one that I've got is Kentucky and Louisville, which if can all right, look, Kentucky is the most experienced team in the SEC this year coming back. However, I don't think they're going to be great this year. Um and they upset Louisville last year and Louisville was 9 and 2. They had a chance to get into a uh, a New Year's Six bowl and Kentucky just went nuts on them. Offensively, scored forty one point. They beat them forty one to thirty eight, and it was, it was back and forth the whole ball game. This is, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's both teams are getting better. You know the coaching is better, the players are better, they're recruiting better, and Lamar Jackson's back, and we love watching Lamar Jackson. That guy's a stud. So, yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think Petrino circles this game. It's. It's in Lexington this year. It was in Louisville last year. But I think it's going to be really entertaining. I think it's going to be a lot of fireworks because both teams have a lot of offensive firepower. Some of these honorable mentions, which uh, which ones did you want to point out? Well, the LSU-BYU game, LSU usually goes out of their way to schedule a big-time opponent. Yep. I think BYU was. I don't think they are today. No. So... That's a little bit of a letdown. The team I'm most excited about out of your honorable mentions is the Arkansas TCU game. I think TCU is going to be really good. Yeah. I think Arkansas is going to have a big bounce back year from a terrible finish from last year. And the game is in Fayetteville, and, and it, they, they beat TCU uh, in Fort Worth last year. Yeah. So, so. I, I just think it's going to be an exciting game. Uh, the rest of these, none of the rest well, of the, them. Well, the other ones that I had it were just – Simple, like Mississippi State at Louisiana Tech. I've got that on there just because I don't understand why Mississippi State has to have home and homes with non-power fives. I don't understand why they put themselves in that position. Louisiana Tech's a pretty good team under Skip Holtz. Like, they always have been. So, you know they're going to try and pull out all the stops to get a win in Ruston. Well, okay, so I actually know the answer to that. It's the same reason why they do it, why Ole Miss did it to Memphis, why other teams have done it to Memphis. It's you want to go there and recruit. You you want to go on the road, play a game, and you've got your coaching staff and your your people in that area for a week. That just does, it it still doesn't make sense to me. Well, watch, watch they'll pull at least one or two kids from that area of next year's recruiting class. Yeah, maybe you're right. I just don't know how big of an area Ruston is. You know? Well, but it, but just a just lot, Louisiana in there's general. There's a lot of Louisiana talent. Now it's you're right. So you're you're talking about a, a town in a small yeah, part and they of the country. And they play LSU in Starkville this year, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so they want to be in Louisiana. Yeah. All right. So I've I've got Missouri Purdue. Um, Jeff Brom is the new coach at Purdue. That could be interesting. Uh, Vanderbilt Kansas State. If Vandy is still the Vandy that they were last year, I don't think they are. But if there's still the Vandy from last season, that could be interesting because it's in Nashville. Mississippi State and BYU. State lost in Provo at the end of the game last season on, on a late game touchdown. And it was late. Yes. Late, late. Um, that one could be interesting. Vanderbilt, Western Kentucky. I don't know what the new guy at Western Kentucky is going to be yeah, like. We don't, we don't know what Western Kentucky is going to look like Yeah, at all. because they've got a brand new coach, obviously, because Brom went to Purdue, like we just talked about. Uh, Ole Miss and Louisiana Lafayette. I only find that funny because... Both of these schools have had to deal with those NCAA issues due to a lot of it due to the same guy, David Saunders. You know, he he got both of them in trouble with things that he did. A uh, and M and New Mexico. If Texas A and M falls off, New Mexico led college football in rushing yards per game last year, and that was A and M's downfall. If you watched A and M against anybody last year. Running backs went crazy. They went crazy on Everybody had career games. New Mexico averaged 350 yards per game running the football last year. Their offense is predicated on your defense making mistakes, and Chavis' defenses at Texas A&M have done that. all the t- They've got all the talent in the world, and they cannot figure out how to put this thing together. If they're not kel- uh, careful... They've got a tough schedule around this. If they don't watch out for this game, that could mean some some bad juju. Yeah. And then the I last one, the last one I've got it. I, look, they should blow them out. They should. That's right. But you never know. That's right. Um, Georgia, Georgia Tech. That's the last one for honorable mention. Every year, it's always close. Like the last four years, I think it's been by an average of two points per game. You know, I, I don't think it's anything nuts, but. You know, you gotta you gotta toss it on there just to have. It. 
This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at Gary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.